Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you do feel like this video is helpful in any type of way. Alright you guys, so to start off with this video, I am using the Apray Tips from Chun Legend. And they are upside down. And this is a little thing that I had actually made. Um, my little stand. If you guys do want a video on that, of basically how I stick them and everything, please be sure to check out my YouTube channel just because I do have a video on this. Alright you guys, so first off we're going to go ahead and get this color. This color is by Essie and it is in the color Walt. It's like a really really pretty milk white type of color and um, I personally like to layer it about three times. I feel like that is the perfect color for me. Uh, but yeah, I feel like you guys could go less or more. It just really depends on what your preference is. And with me I do feel like it is a little bit still too clear for me when I just do the first coat. And when you guys do cure this, I recommend curing it for the 60 seconds. Since it is a sheer polish, you don't need to do like super, super crazy cures and do it for over the 60 seconds just because it is kind of more on that clear side. And then we're gonna go ahead and just apply another coat of that. And then once we are done with this, we're gonna put that in the light for another 60 seconds. Since these tips are flipped over, what you guys might want to do, if you guys do feel like your gel is puddling up only in the center, you guys could actually flip it the opposite way, hold it there for like maybe five seconds or so, and the, the polish will actually go back to the edges of the nail. Just because with having it like that, it's almost like you're putting polish in a crater and it just wants to settle in the center of the nail. So that's a tip that I could give you guys if you guys do feel like that is a problem for you guys if you guys do this method. And you guys might even be wondering, why do I have the nails flipped upside down in the first place and doing it this way? I just really like doing it this way, especially because I don't like my nails looking bulky. I really like it to keep the shape and the nails are already perfectly shaped. So I really don't want to end up putting it on top and putting layers and layers and layers when I could just put it underneath and it still keeps the same the same shape without compromising it. And on top of that, something that I do really like is that it requires me to apply less glue at the bottom. So that is another win for me. So or if you guys do plan on adhering it to the nails with the Extend Gel, um, you guys might want to keep it on the clearer side and not do that third coat. Just because... With the third coat, I don't think that it would allow it to fully cure in between the nails if you guys do end up trying to do that. But this does help fill the gap in between the nail enhancement and your natural nail, especially if your nails are more of a flat bedded nail. Alright you guys, but you guys could see what it looks like with me doing the third coat of this. And if I do feel like I need to go back, of course, I'm going to go ahead and go back. And you'll see, once I am done with this, in the next clip, I am actually going to be flipping them upside down like this. I feel like it just helps really even everything out. So if there is anything on the sides where I don't feel like it is staying in place where I want it to, it just helps drip it back down to that area. And I really like to kind of clean up as I go. So if my bottles do get messy, I definitely recommend cleaning up your bottles just because clients, they do see that. So if you guys are working on clients, you really want to make sure that your area is nice and clean and your bottles don't look a hot mess. Um, with me, I really take pride in how clean my station is. A lot of people, they come in and they're really surprised about how clean my nail desk actually is just because they say that they've been to places where it's been a lot worse. So definitely make sure that you are keeping up on your nail desk and your cleanliness because clients do see that. Next, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and go in with a top coat. I highly recommend putting a no white top coat just because that would defeat the purpose of putting a top coat at the bottom of these nails 
the no wipe top coat basically what that allows you to be able to do is where the there is just no dispersion layer and with this se gel there is a dispersion layer so you definitely really 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 want to make sure that you are using a top coat at the bottom that is a no wipe one just because if you don't any fibers or lint will end up clinging to the bottom of the nail and it's really hard to actually get it off especially if it, this is a client that you guys are doing this on you don't want that all right you guys so now what i'm gonna go ahead and do is pick out my color and i am gonna flip all the nails all around and the inspo that we are doing today is actually from Nails by Esther. She is an amazing nail artist. So definitely recommend that you guys go check her out, give her a follow. And yeah, so she is so amazing. If you guys don't know about her, you guys should. She comes out with so many amazing different types of art. But so basically with this set, what you're going to want to do is French tip every single tip. And what I like to do, what I found that was the easiest for me and time efficient for myself, and I don't spend a ton amount of time like trying to figure out where to start and stop my, my French tips, this is actually the best way and the fastest way for myself <laughs> to do this. So what you're going to go going to want to do is actually just get your color of choice that you're going to do and start painting up to the line where you feel like you want your your tips to start at if that makes any sense <laughs> and then you're going to want to dab on a, a polished palette and then get your acetone or brush cleaner clean off your brush and then load your brush um when you guys are loading your brush don't just dab the tip of it in there you really want to like kind of like press it into your product and making sure that it coats all the bristles nice and evenly because if you don't it actually i feel like the the paint brush doesn't do the best job that it could and if you guys are having problems with your you feeling like the french tip is making the nail beds look way too wide Something I highly recommend doing is painting higher on the sides and it gives the nail such a slimmer look. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. It just like makes the nail look so slim and so nice. And I felt like before I didn't do this technique and I felt like my nails were looking so wide and I, I didn't, I couldn't tell you why I didn't like them until I started doing this. I felt like doing more of a flat line in or like not enough of a swoop i do feel like it makes the nails look kind of chubbier so if you guys do feel like that is a problem then by all means try that technique i promise you guys you guys will like it and a lot of times things that i hear clients complain about is if they don't have nails on their fingers look chubby so you don't want to actually enhance the chubbiness of anyone's fingers just because it chances are they might not end up liking the set but it's not because you did a bad job. It's just because where you started your line. So definitely recommend trying that out and seeing if that works for you. Let me know if you guys try that method out. And yeah, let me know.
All right, you guys. And then if you guys do want, you guys could do another coat of this. If you don't feel like it's super pigmented on the corners and up high where the designs aren't going to be. So since with me, I did end up doing a flame design on the thumb and the ring finger. Honestly, I don't feel like it even needed to have another coat on there. But just because the flames, they ended up covering a majority of that French tip design. So I do feel like you could get away with only doing one coat, but that is definitely up to you. Use your discretion. But if that helps save you some time, by all means, try it. And then I really like to go around the French tip again, just making sure everything's all nice and clean. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and get this blooming gel. This is from Not Polish. And when you do these snake skin print nails with the blooming gel, something that I recommend, do not go over the whole nail with the blooming gel because if you do that, then all of that gel, or if you end up putting the, the gel down for the design, you will end up finding that it, it will disperse onto the part that's not a part of the French tip and it ends up just not looking clean and nice. It just kind of looks a little bit messy. But something that I feel like I like is that you don't really have to even go all the way up when it comes to your, your French tip. Like if you're tracing it with the blooming gel, just because I feel like it kind of gives a little bit of a better look if you didn't go all the way up. That's just my personal experience and what I think what looks good and then what you guys could do is actually add little dots in between there and it just gives a little bit more detail but I like to also wipe the sides and then I'm gonna cure that if you don't end up curing it it might end up blooming too much and it end up just looking like a big hot mess but and that's gonna go into the light for 60 seconds if you guys even just wanted to flash cure this just so it didn't move you guys can do that but I just wanted to put it in there for a longer period of time just to make sure it was nice and set. And I, there's times where I do like to flash cure it, but with black polish, honestly, you guys, I don't really recommend flash cure that much, especially this Tracy's Nail one, just because it's so pigmented that it really does need 120 seconds to cure this. Because... If you don't, if you end up putting a matte over it, matte especially, a lot of times with any super pigmented, any super pigmented gel, it is going to smear, and I don't know what it is when it comes to black and matte top coats. I feel like any ones that I would use, it would end up smearing it. So really, really, really do yourself a favor in extra cure, <laughs> just because you don't want that happening to you, especially if you work so hard on a design you really don't want any mess ups so I have been seeing this design on Nailed by Esther's page it, you've, you guys haven't seen it already I don't know how it's been everywhere so many people have reposted it so many other people have recreated it and I just really wanted to recreate it so of course I had to make a video on it just because I know you guys really love the recreation videos and just seeing like my take on it, what I use, and yeah. So I thought instead of doing it with acrylic, I really did want to um, do it with just gel in the a Prey Gel X. And right here, you guys, you guys could see that I am doing flames. So this method I actually seen on TikTok. First, what you do is make a cross and then attach everything. First, you're gonna want to do a little C at the tip of or at the top of the cross. Do a C. And then squiggle your lines up from that. And then it also helps with placement where you you know where to put your placement. So I feel like this method is a great method. If you guys haven't seen it or tried this method, definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. Just because with flames, honestly, you guys, I was so lost. I was like, how do I even make a flame? Flames are so hard. Like I tried in the past. And I felt like I never, ever did a really good job. So with this method, I wish I could find the TikTok user that actually recommended this. 
because I can't tell you how many times I use this method and even my clients are like, oh my gosh, Lorena, your, your flames are so bomb. So, I mean, definitely try it out. My clients are always happy, so that makes me happy. <laughs> And then you're going to want to make sure that neck at the bottom of that C is really, really close together just because it gives like a really, really nice look. And then you can make that little squiggly line on the side and then make it thin at the top and thicker at the bottom. And that is how I do my flames. And you guys could see that the set slowly starts to come together. Honestly, you guys, once you guys figure out a way that works for you, I feel like and it, everything will start to come to you naturally. But definitely try a lot of different methods and see what works for you. Because I tried decals um, for the nails, and that wasn't really my favorite just because the decals, they are so big, so they do tend to kind of come off a little bit. Uh, but you can do, like, two coats on it. And doing the two coats on it, honestly, it really does help. And that's going to go ahead and go into the light for 30 seconds. Alright you guys, and then now I'm just going to go ahead and repaint over half of my brown section. And even if you guys were doing this on an actual person, something that you guys can do is actually flip the, their finger around and like slide your brush the other way if that makes it easier for you. And then you just make that little swoop and then you're going to want to fill it in and then get a dotting tool. I recommend getting a pretty large dotting tool so then you could do the dot on the other side just because I feel like if you do it too small it might look unproportionate. And then once you're done curing that black, you're going to want to go ahead and go in with the brown so you guys can make that other dot and make that yin and yang hole. And then next you're going to want to do another cross on that other one. I thought this one I would do a little bit on the lower side instead of doing it as high as the other one. But you guys could see better in this one how to do that C. And then just make your swiggle in. I kind of like to make the tops of them or like the middle ones closer just like how I did right there like you could see the flames they kind of like swoop in towards each other and then kind of just go back down and make the base of it a lot bigger. And then I wanted to make that center bigger um, and a little bit more on that thicker side just so then everything flows nicely together. And look how beautiful that looks you guys. I feel like honestly the more you practice, if you did all 10 fingers and you tried to make it work for you guys honestly by the tenth finger you will see progress so if you guys are feeling like the flames are hard for you definitely keep trying and trying and trying because there are sets that I do where it's like okay like the first finger I'm not too proud of but then I go to the next finger and I see progress and I go to the next one and I do something better than what I I liked better this time than last time so definitely 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 try and try and try you guys it's gonna be hard on the first time I promise you but once you get the hang of it you will feel so much better about it and 
being able to add this to things that you could give to your clients and them really really like it I definitely recommend just trying it you will be actually really impressed with yourself if you do end up following certain instructions from different nail techs just because it does help so much like I honestly you guys if you guys don't have TikTok in your nail tech or you don't watch reels in your nail tech, what are you doing? <laughs> Just because, honestly, you guys, even I've been doing nails for seven years now, and I learned so much off of TikTok. Like, TikTok and reels, they are really where it's at. Like, I know you guys, if you guys need hands-on classes, there's so many. But if you were like me when I first started my nail career, I could not afford to take a nail class. And the nail classes, they were so expensive. And so I completely get not being able to take one even if you wanted to. But go on the internet. Go find videos. Save them to your phone. And then once you have free time, pull up all those videos. Because if you don't save them somewhere in your phone, you're going to forget about them and you'll never end up doing it. Or chances are you'll end up working on something else or, you know, whatever. But this really really helps me so it's like if I do find a video that I do feel like is beneficial for myself and it would be beneficial for my clients because they're going to be asking for those nail trends you guys <laughs> they do not let me slip on nail trends all of my clients every time they see a nail trend they're like oh Lorena let's do this oh Lorena let's do that oh I seen this you know so definitely always recommend keeping up on your game because your clients will thank you so much for that all right, you guys, I'm so sorry I did end up talking quite a bit, but I do want to mention that with the black, I did end up curing it for 120 seconds just because I really wanted to make sure that it was all the way cured. I didn't want there to be any smearing or anything like that. So definitely make sure to cure your black extra because it needs it. <laughs> and then with the matte top coat, I ended up using Koopa. Um, Koopa matte top coat is a really, really good matte top coat if you guys are in the market for some. I'm going to go ahead and link everything down below. So if you guys are interested in anything that I use in this video, please be sure to check the description down below. And I also have my link tree so it has all my Instagram or any information if you guys would like to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or anything like that. All right, you guys, this is a finished look. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll be back with more videos. Bye!